Welcome back. So we have been looking at the tournament problem. So the problem states that in a football league there are n teams. Any two team or every two team has played against each other exactly once and either of the teams has won. So there is no draw. Prove that it is possible to number the teams in such a way that Team I defeats Team I plus 1. That means Team 1 defeats Team 2, Team 2 defeats Team 3, Team 3 defeats Team 4 and so on. In the last video lecture, we saw how to model this problem as graph. So as a quick recap, let's go over it once. So what is the graph? A graph is a set of vertices and a set of edges which are basically pairs of vertices. The graph is given as V, comma, E, where V is the set of vertices and E is the set of edges. Now there are some basic definitions of graphs. First of all, if UV is in edge and that implies that VU is in edge, then the graph is undirected. And we can also have weights on the edges for uh, for our need as, as and when we will need it. Also if there is an edge from u to v then we call v is the neighbor of u and in an undirected graph the number of neighbors that v has is called the degree of v. So pictorial, pictorially we draw the graphs as this kind of blobs representing the vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The edges, which are basically pairs of vertices, are represented by lines drawn between those two corresponding vertices. So that means here A comma D or D comma A is an edge, whereas A comma C is not an edge. So this is called the undirected graph. Of course, for our need, we might have weights on these edges, and then we have all this as weighted undirected graph. And when the binary relation is not symmetric, that means a a comma d is not same as d comma a, then we represent it using arrows like this. So arrows which represent here that there is an edge from D to A but there is no edge from A to D. So it is a non-symmetric binary relation. In this case we call it as a directed graph. Now we have already seen how a graph can help in visualizing a problem. In general, graphs are very useful for expressing relations, which is a, a very key component in many problems that we handle. So many problems in real life can be designed as problems in graph theory. We will see more of this uh, in the coming weeks. And so studying the structures of graphs and designing algorithms is an important field in graph theory. So some properties of graphs are used more often than not, rather when we represent problems in graphs, certain properties keep coming up again and again. For them we have special names and they kind of start a new subject on their own. So one such thing is a path. So what is a path? A path is a set of sequence of vertices, so path from u to v is a sequence of vertices v0, v1 till vk where the first vertex v0 is u and the last vertex vk is v and there is an edge between vi and vi plus 1. That means there is an edge between v0 and v1 from v1 to v2 and v2 to v3 and so on. So for example here if I want to draw 
the a and a path between g to a, we can have this as a path. G F D A is a path. In a graph, one can have multiple paths. For example, when this is a path, G E C B D A is a path. Now we are we are looking at undirected graphs, so we don't care about the direction of the edges. But if the graph is directed, for example, say this, in that case, as you can see, this following the red path is not exactly a path because G E is fine. We can have a path from G to E, a H from E to C, C to B, but there is no H from B to D. So this B to D H is a problem. But there is a path from G to A in this graph, which is this one. So this is a path from G to A, G E C B A, right? In an undirected graph, we uh, rather anywhere uh, in any graph, we say U is connected to V if there is a path from U to V. In an undirected graph, this concept of connectedness forms an equivalent relation, and if there is a path from U to V, there is a path from V to U. An undirected graph is called connected if every pair of vertices in the graph is connected to each other by a path. There are different kind of paths that we also study. One of them, which is important for us for this problem, is the Hamiltonian path. So Hamiltonian path is a path that touches every vertices exactly once. A graph may or may not have a Hamiltonian path. And if I have a cycle that touches every vertex every one, exactly once, we call it a Hamiltonian cycle. So this Hamiltonian path and Hamiltonian cycle are of extreme importance and has been studied quite thoroughly. So let, let us quickly take a look at what does it look like. So in this problem, in this directed graph, you can see that this is a path from C to A, sorry, E to A, E, G, F, D, B, A, but it is not a Hamiltonian path because it does not touch every vertex. For example, it does not touch the vertex C. You can also convince yourself by playing with this graph that this graph does not have a Hamiltonian path. But if we draw an edge from C to E, in that case, so if we have, we have just now drawn this edge, this direction edge, okay, in that case, we can have a Hamiltonian path, namely this one, C, E, G, F, D, B, A. Note that the original labeling of the vertices is just irrelevant. The Hamiltonian path is just a path from some vertex to some vertex, some other vertex where every A vertex is appears once. So here, for example, we have marked this one as the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Right? So the original labeling is not something of that importance for us. Now, coming back to the problem that we have, we basically looked at this problem and converted this problem into a problem in graph theory. How? We considered the n vertices v1 to vn as the teams. And we edge, draw, drew an edge from vi to vj if team vi defeated team vj. Now, if you recall, if vi defeated vj, then vj does not defeat vi because they play only one game between them. 
which means that the graph is directed. And the other thing is that between any two pairs of vertices, since any two teams played at least one game and the game did not end in a draw, so there must be an edge in one of the two directions. So that means either there is an edge from VI to VJ or an edge from VJ to VI. And what do we have to find? We have to kind of find <coughs> or number the <coughs> number the vertices in such a way that the first vertex defeats second vertex, second vertex defeats third vertex, third vertex means fourth vertex, and so on, till the nth vertices. In other words, I want to have a path from one vertex to some other vertex where the path is directed and every vertex appears exactly once. So the question is that is there a path from where every vertex appears exactly one? By the way, this kind of a graph where any two between any two vertices there is an edge and it is oriented in one of the two directions is called a tournament. And as you have seen already, a path that, that touches every vertex is a Hamiltonian path. So in other words, what we are asking is that if G is a tournament, prove that there is a Hamiltonian path. Right? So prove that every tournament has a Hamiltonian path. Recall that we just some time ago told that not every graph have a Hamiltonian path. So this is a statement in graph theory in some sense which says that every tournament has a Hamiltonian path. Now how do you prove it? Of course the hint is induction and how do we go about it? So we prove it by induction. Now whenever we have a graph theory problem and we have an induction in our hand, we can induct on a number of things. We can induct on number of vertices, we can induct on number of edges, we can induct on number of cycles and so on and so forth. In fact, we will show you a quite a number of proofs using various kinds of induction. But in this case, we will be inducting on the number of vertices. So here, we have to split up into small parts as we do in any induction case. And here say let pk be a tournament on k vertices, be the statement that a tournament on k vertices has a Hamiltonian path. And we have to prove that for all k, let pk be true. So of course, if this is the pk, that the tournament on k vertices has a Hamiltonian path, we have to do three steps. First of all, base case, induction hypothesis, which where we say that okay let it be true for some k and then assuming that we know that it is true for some k prove this case for k for p k plus one right now the base case so k equals to one and two just for simplicity we I have taken both the cases now what are the case for k equals to one I have only one vertex it doesn't make any sense. For k equals to 2, I have two vertex and of course there is an edge from one to the other and hence I have a Hamiltonian path. So it's again, it's a pretty easy thing. So the base case here in both the cases are pretty easy. So this is a Hamiltonian path. So I just have to number this one as 1 and number this one 2 and we get this one. Now, the induction hypothesis says that for some k, we have pk is true and using, using that, we have to prove that it is true for pk plus 1. Now whenever we do graph, induction on graphs, this is something that is very crucial that we should always start from an instance for which we have to prove a statement. So here we have to prove the statement for pk plus 1 which means that we start with a tournament on k plus 1 vertices. 
So you start with the tournament of peak k plus 1 vertices. Now we have to if, to, if we have to use the induction hypothesis, we have to reduce the problem into a smaller case. So how do we do it? If you remember in the last problem that we did, which was this handshake problem, we picked up a pair of vertex of a particular kind and then inducted on that. So here, if we have to prove that G is a tournament, we start with any vertex V. Now, how does it look like? So here is the graph G, and I picked up a vertex out of it. So this is V, and this is this G minus V, right? And there are edges from V to all the vertices in G minus V, and they are ordered in some oriented in some direction, which we don't know. Now, one thing to note is that this graph G minus V is in fact a tournament on K vertices. The original graph whole G was a, was a tournament on K vertex, K plus 1 vertices. I have removed one vertex, so the number of vertices in G minus V is K. And why is G minus V a tournament? Because again, between any two vertex, in G minus V, there must be a edge and it and is directed in one of the two cases. That's the definition of tournament, right? And since G was a tournament originally, so this must also be a tournament. Between any two vertex, there must be an edge. So I can apply the induction hypothesis on this problem. Right? So I can so assume that. So we start with the V, we look at G minus V, that is the tournament on K vertices, and the induction hypothesis, it has a path, right? Now, what does it mean by that? So let's try to draw it again, one second, very carefully. So G has a Hamiltonian path, so that means G must have some set of vertices, I mean, a, a Hamiltonian path, say this is the Hamiltonian path. Let me draw the vertices in blue. So, we have somehow renamed the whole set of vertices and we have got things like, okay, the first one is V1, second one is V2, till the last one is Vk, and I got a Hamiltonian path. That means there is an edge from V1 to V2, V2 to V3, and so on till Vk. And I have the V sitting over here. This is the V. Question is that, how is the V connected to rest of them? So let V1 to Vk be the Hamiltonian path. So we have this G minus V, the Hamiltonian path, and this has the path V1 to Vk. Now, how are the edges in V1 to Vk oriented? So look at the edge from V1 to V. V2 to V. V3 to V. And by going so till the end. Now we have split the whole cases into three cases. The first case, there is an edge from V to V1, something like this. Second case is there is an edge from Vk to V. And the third case is neither of them happen. That means there is an edge from the opposite direction, V1 to V and V to Vk. Now in each of these three cases, I will show that I can extend this Hamiltonian path V1 to Vk to a Hamiltonian path on G, meaning on V1 to Vk and V. Also note that these three cases are covers all the cases. 
Okay, because this is one case v to v1, vk to v, and the third case is neither of the above, above two happens. For any of the cases, we will show that we can extend it. So we'll prove that in all the cases we can get our Hamiltonian path on. Now let's start with the first case. In the first case, there is an h from v to v1. If that is the case, can you see a Hamiltonian path here? Hamiltonian path is a path on k plus 1 vertices. And yes, there is a Hamiltonian path. V, v1, v2, v3, till vk. There is an h from v to v1. Great. So in the case 1, there is a Hamiltonian path on the whole graph. Note that the whole graph, this whole graph is the G graph. Right? Now let's look at the case 2. Case 2 is that there is a H from VK to V. If there is a H from VK to V, can you see the Hamiltonian path? Again, yes. I have V1, V2, V3, V4 till Vk and then to V. So V1 to Vk, comma V is a Hamiltonian path in G. Great. Now we come to the third case. Third case is neither of these two happens, right? So there is an H from V1 to V. Let me draw them. There is an from V1 to V and the H from V to Vk. Now, once this is the case, unfortunately, we cannot obviously extend it to a Hamiltonian path. There is no Hamiltonian path can be seen here in the picture right now. But what happens if there is an A from V to V, V to V2, something like this? In that case, I would have got a Hamiltonian path, which was, which is V1, V, V2, V3, V4, V5. So I first start with V1, then V2, sorry, then V, V1, V, V2, then V3, then V4, and so on. So V1, V, V2, V3, V4, till Vk would have been a Hamiltonian path. But again, then there is no guarantee of that also, right? What is the guarantee that the age between v to v, v2 goes in this direction, downward direction? It might be that the age is actually going upward. In that case, what happens if I have an age going from v to v3? I would again get a path which is, in that case, v1, v2, then v, then v3, then v4, till vk. Okay, but problem is that even then there is no guarantee that I would have got that. I could have this path from v3 to v going in the opposite direction, like this. Now question is that, can I always have path going in the upward direction? Answer is no, because if all the paths are going in the opposite direction, but at the end v to v1, V to Vk goes in the downward direction. So there must be an I where I have a from Vi I will have a edge going up and Vi plus 1 I have an edge going down. Vi to V, this is Vi and this is Vi plus 1. Vi plus to V and V to Vi plus 1. And in that case, we will have a Hamiltonian path, which is, of course, V1 to Vi, then Vi from there will go up to V, then V to Vi plus 1, and then complete it to Vk. So thus, in this case also, we will get the solution. Of course, this is something I made a mistake. This should be 3. 
This is the case number three. So the crucial part here was understanding this statement that there exists an I such that VI to V and V to VI plus 1 exist. So we have proved that for all the three cases, we can extend the Hamiltonian path on G, P minus, on G minus V to the Hamiltonian path of G. And hence, by induction hypothesis, we have the proof that any Hamiltonian, any tournament has a Hamiltonian path. In the next video lecture, we will be, so we have proved this particular big tournament problem in this video lecture. The next video lecture, we will be looking at the Ramsey number problem and a new understanding on graph theory, new concept of graph theory will be used. Thank you.